Hey cats, it's your midsole man, Ed Budd here. An initial review today for you of a shoe that's a bit under the radar. I have here the super light and super cheap Puma Liberate Nitro 2. This is a shoe that Puma suggests is for those faster, shorter runs. So why is it not being talked about as much as its bigger brothers? Let's take a closer look. Welcome one and all to my review of the Puma Liberate Nitro 2. A lower stack Puma shoe for the rotation where the sessions are faster and the distances a little shorter. Where the huge foam stacks are simply not warranted. This is a shoe that's been sent to me by the big cats themselves. Though no one's going to probe me for my views beforehand. You my valued viewers get to see my thoughts and opinions first. They're not paying me to make this video so rest easy son. Before we get into the review, make sure you give this video a thumbs up like, it really does help us out. Stats first, because I give the viewers what they want and people ask me for numbers, so here they come. 241 grams here or 8.5 ounces on the money for a UK size 11 or US size 12. I found it true to size in length, so go with your standard running shoe size. But I would suggest that the upper is a little bit more generous, I suppose, than the previous model. It's certainly not anywhere near as constrictive as something like the Adios or six or seven or the Takumi Sen 8. There is a bit more of a narrower feel though in the footbed here compared to the Velocity Nitro 2. Now, I think the original Liberate Nitro is about 223 grams, 7.7 .7 ounces in my size. And in fairness, it's quite a different looking shoe. I think I prefer the new version, I have to be honest. We've got about 31 millimeters of nitro foam here in the heel and about 25 millimeters in the forefoot, making for a six millimeter drop overall. At least that's what the Puma website tells me and my figures tally up. So there's a tiny bit more foam here in the forefoot over the original by about two millimeters. I'm sure you'll be able to feel it if your toes are very sensitive. Now the previous version was super light on foot, I have to be honest, though some people did find there wasn't quite enough foam in the forefoot for them to perhaps go up to that half marathon distance. So I think that's what Puma have done here, added a little bit more foam there in the front. We've got a typical nitro foam softness here of 33 on the short A scale. I tested out the old one as well, it seems to be the same foam. We've got about 10.2 centimeters of width in the forefoot and about 8.5 in the heel. So it's comparable to something like the Adios 6 or 7 in terms of the surface area, but certainly in terms of width right up at the front, it is quite a compact shoe. Makes me remember some of those old race flats that you used to see. We will start with the upper first. This is very much a sort of glove-like shoe up here in the front. If the Puma shoes fit you, then you'll really like this one. Upper-wise, an incredibly simple affair, really. Puma have scaled back the materials. Only a hint of the power tape there on the lateral side of the toe box to provide a bit of durability. Simple mesh around the foot, though perhaps not quite as narrow and pointed in the front of the shoe as the V1. This shoe out of the box certainly does feel like it's up for the faster sessions, and the upper really suits a nice tight fit around the foot. There's a very minimal heel here, guys. It feels like there's something back there as a counter, but it's very minimal. I think it's probably closer to the Rocket X2, really, in terms of the heel. If you like that shoe, you may like this one. Perhaps leaning a little bit more to the Puma Fast R Nitro in terms of the actual upper design. The laces aren't too stretchy, and the upper doesn't give too much over the initial miles, though I would suggest that a slightly cushioned sock will help to actually dial in the lockdown over the top of the foot. I think if you want really plush materials on foot, then the Liberate Nitro 2 isn't going to be for you. This one really is bare bones. You know, don't get me wrong, it's not uncomfortable in any way, but it feels like you're inside a rally car here where they've kind of taken out all of the very plush seats. You're just left with that sort of frame inside. It's the bare minimum that you need, and that might be great for some people. In some ways, the upper design here does remind me a little bit of shoes like the Nike Zoom Streak or perhaps the Takumi Sen models from a few years back. They were all about upper fit glove-like. The tongue is a little bit odd here. It kind of protrudes up around the ankle a little bit. It hasn't really irritated me or anything, but I did find that the tongue seems to slip and slide around somewhat. I did retie the laces mid-run on my first outing in the shoe. Just wanted to get a slightly better lockdown and feel like the foot was in contact with the midsole a bit more. 
I'd suggest the upper materials are very, very breathable though, certainly for running in some very warm weather. And it's just so simple here that it's hard for Puma to get it wrong. After my initial runs in the shoe, I'm gonna give the upper a 2.7 out of three. Hopefully I'll be able to dial in the tongue a little bit better so it doesn't move around. Midsole, midsole, midsole now. Now midsole wise, this is a shoe you're either gonna love or you're not. By today's standards, it's certainly a very low stack. I've recently got a pair of the Triumph 21 from Socony and this one looks like a sandal almost compared to that shoe. It's certainly got a lot of ground feel if you really like to get the surface you know between your toes it almost feels like you are with this shoe the nitro foam in the midsole here almost bouncing you along it's certainly firmer the material that you've got here than the zoom x that you find in like the street fly or perhaps the fuel cell in the rebel 2 i felt those shoes almost disappeared really under your foot you do get a bit more response and bounce from the nitro material in the liberate nitro 2 responsive shoe its whole remit is faster running i don't think anyone's going to really take this on very easy days it just isn't the shoe for you i think if you're undertaking some repetitions or perhaps some interval work running at sort of tempo pace maybe wanting to dial in those speeds i think the liberate nitro 2 could be an excellent one despite the fact it's a little bit heavier than the first version it still feels incredibly light on foot when you get down below about 250 grams it's really not an awful lot there i found no issue getting up to a half marathon pace on some mile repeats and then below six minutes per mile on some shorter bursts towards the end of my run the shoe really does feel like it wants to turn over quickly and i think that's facilitated by the very low weight and the low drop as well it's another one of those low drop shoes that just seems to work for me i wouldn't say that the foam here is unforgiving in any way but it's certainly a little bit firmer than the average which i find is about 28 on the short a scale though bear in mind i am on the lower weight scale myself i tend to prefer shoes that are a little bit like this I'm tall and thin and sometimes those very high stack max cushion shoes can feel a bit like pillows on my feet and i'm sort of barely impacting into the foam at all i think the shoe's very comfortable on foot strike to me feels nimble feels quick i think you could use it as a race shoe really as well as a training shoe when you think that the pegasus 40 is like 100 grams heavier than this one that puts it into perspective as to where it will sit in your rotation 5k to 10k i don't think i'd have a problem in this shoe maybe even up to 10 miles but half marathon could be a push though the lighter and younger runners out there would probably be absolutely fine perhaps a good viable alternative if you don't want to shell out the big bucks for the takumi sen 9 but you want something that's a little bit more forgiving perhaps than the adios 7 i found the nitro foam does tend to sort of bed in after a while does free up and become a little bit more airy but it's certainly a firm favorite for me going forward for my speed work when i need to tune up that intensity level it is the more niche shoe of the puma stable at the moment but they those who don't want to be bogged down by a more weighty daily option could get some real fun out of the Liberate Nitro 2. I think it could actually work for you if you're running on some lighter trails as well. Nitro foam is just that bit more durable than some of those other fragile efforts. I mean, you could, of course, augment the midsole feel here with a slightly thicker insole. I'm going to experiment by swapping out the quite thin foam insole that we have here as standard out the box. Maybe putting in one of those crushed up Zoomex insoles or even an Innovate Boomerang one too. Though I think any of those very cushioned insoles will be to the detriment of what the Liberate Nitro 2 is. Its main function is speed really and not distance. As such, it's more of a niche shoe. I'll give it a 2.6 out of 3 for the midsole so far. Outsole now. We got a big old slab of that Puma Grip rubber up front. The actual lugs are quite deep as well. You really feel them biting into the ground like a hungry snake. Those snakes don't really bite into the ground. You know what I mean? The pattern's very familiar if you've picked up any other Puma shoes and you've got some slightly smoother lugs back there in the heel. Very tactile as per usual and again an extremely simple design here from the big cats. I would though recommend this shoe mainly for mid to four foot runners. Perhaps where you can get a Way with a slightly more minimal stack as such the heel rubber isn't all that important in this shoe i think puma grip is the best out there for road running right now and it's really hard to fault this application the grip is really quite sensational where they've positioned the rubber it does allow for some flex in that sort of mid to four foot area and the rubber depth here isn't too controlling of that sort of four foot rigidity lots of people dislike that about the adios 7 from adidas i kind of like that feel really where you've got a little bit more snap maybe puma 
will look to experiment a little down the line by adding in some sort of elements into this shoe could give it a little bit of an edge over some of the other models so i see these hammering out the miles without any major durability concerns in short puma grip takes ages to wear down i think the midsole will lose its luster long before we see these lugs wearing out i'll give it a 2.8 out of 3 so far for the outsole value now this shoe retails for quite a low price really i was quite surprised that i am seeing some lower prices online like way below retail so you can pick yourself up a bargain i think if you're a puma fan you like their shoes right now and you want something that you can use for road and track work too the liberate nitro 2 is absolutely worth picking up and adding to the rotation the midsole stack and the firmer feel may lack the versatility of something like the endorphin speed 3 or maybe some of the more recent fuel cell models but those shoes are for completely different purposes this is a lower range shoe for faster running with reduced weight the design is simple in nature for that purpose really not all models need to be max stacked out beasts do we need huge foam slabs every single time sometimes it's good just to be a bit more minimal like a ham and mustard sandwich it serves a purpose well, it's certainly a lot cheaper than the Takumi Sen 8 and 9 right now. And it's way more exciting to run in than that Adi Zero SL. Not a shoe for everybody, but it's got a load of features packed in here that I think some people will love. Why lug around all that cushion and all the padding and stuff if you just don't need it? Though for those that need more resilient cushion, it's no Pegasus or super light Streetfly. I think in that realm, Nike still have the lightest option, though I found my pair of the Streetfly ring incredibly poor in terms of durability don't think you'll have that problem here on the road and on the track i'll give it a 2.6 for value i just think it's a little bit more of a niche shoe probably too little stack here for some people to use on a daily basis if i've totaled the scores up correctly that gives us 10.7 out of 12 for the puma liberate nitro 2 after my initial runs A very propulsive and very fun shoe to run in this one. Have I piqued your interest about the Liberate Nitro 2? Did you enjoy the previous version? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Musical interlude time for you. So I've got to listen to this album quite a few times now. I really enjoy it. I think it's probably my album of the year so far. The Lemon Twigs with Everything Harmony. My absolute favourite track on this one is Born To Be Lonely. It has an incredible chorus. It's like different sections to the track and it just ramps up into the chorus. It sounds like some sort of fairground musical theatre piece. Absolutely fantastic words and lyrics and the music gets my hair standing on end every single time. What a fantastic album. In my head as well, which is track two on this one, is one of the most catchy earworm tracks you're gonna hear. I guarantee you once you've heard it once or twice, that is it, it's in there. I love the super chilled out vibes of Corner of My Eye too. Some beautiful acoustic touches to that track. Go and check it out people, you will not be disappointed. Everything Harmony by The Lemon Twigs. Thank you for tuning in people, it's always appreciated. Help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell below for notifications. Also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.